Hello, I'm Mike Sisko. Thank you for joining me and welcome to the Practical IT Manager Training Series. In this program, I deliver two new training classes every month. Our gold members receive full access to the new classes and all the recorded classes, plus access to my entire IT Manager Resources Library that I spent over 17 years in developing to help IT managers achieve more success. It's a significant amount of Practical IT Manager Training Resources at a very low cost. Today's program has special meaning in my heart. It's titled Fast Start for a New IT Manager. I've been developing IT managers my entire career. That's over 30 years now. This Fast Start program can be helpful for any new IT manager situation, so let's get started. Welcome to the Practical IT Manager Training Series. Today's program is Fast Start for a New IT Manager. Let me give you some background. I've been involved in dozens of new IT manager situations. I've been involved in 45 company acquisitions. I conducted the IT due diligence on those 45 companies, and I had to assimilate all 45 of the technology organizations in those companies into my organization. So I was a new IT manager in those 45 situations. I've been assigned additional organizations. In other words, they gave me additional responsibility in a couple of companies uh, and added it to my existing IT manager responsibility. I've joined a few new companies like most people do. And I've done some interim CIO consulting engagements where I've gone in and started managing the IT organization to help out a company and also to help them uh, find a new permanent CIO I've been involved in over 60 new IT manager situations described above. That's quite a bit. What is a new IT manager responsibility? Well, it could be that this is your very first time to be a manager. So you've just gotten uh, promoted and now you, it's your opportunity uh, to be an IT manager. It could be that you've been assigned a new organization. Let's say you've been managing for a while, but they've given you a new responsibility. Or it could be that you've inherited another IT organization that they've added onto your existing responsibility, so you've got another organization that you're managing in addition to the one that you started out with. Or maybe you've gone to a new company as a new manager, or maybe you're joining a company as a new CIO. In any one of these situations, in fact in all of them, when you go into a new IT manager situation, it's a new day. So we're starting fresh, we've got a new team to work with, uh, new responsibilities and so forth. So it's a new day. Well, there's some common things in all of these scenarios. It doesn't matter if you're a first time manager or a new CIO. And those commonalities are, you've got a new team to manage, you've got new responsibilities in this situation, there are different clients that you've got to take care of, and you have new challenges with this new environment. Each situation is going to be unique. They're all unique. Now there may be some common elements associated with the last organization that you manage, uh, but there's going to be some unique situations as well if you're going into a new IT manager situation. And let me re-emphasize it doesn't matter if this is your first time to manage an IT organization or if you're, you're an experienced CIO and you've joined a new company. All of these situations, you're going to deal with a new team, new responsibilities, different clients, and new challenges. Each situation will be unique. All right, stop for just a second and think. You're a new IT manager. What do you want? Ask yourself this question. What do you want as a new IT manager? Well, most of us want these things. We want to succeed. We want to make a difference. We want to have career growth and we want to do a good job, and we want to gain respect. It all comes back to we want to succeed in this new role. And we also want to do this quickly. I'll show you how in this program to create a fast start. And at the end of the program, there will be a free download uh, that I call a fast start checklist that will summarize the program that we're about to go through. So be sure to stay through the end and get your download. There's some guidelines for managing IT that I think are important. 
These guidelines include you need to focus on managing, not being a technical expert. Now, let me put this into perspective. If you've been a technical expert, whether that be a software developer or a systems engineer, doesn't matter. If you've been a technical expert, it's very difficult to let go of the detail and focus on the managing part. It's very hard transition moving from technical expert to management. It's one of the hardest transitions there is and one of your biggest challenges as you go into management. So if this is your first management responsibility, this can be a challenge. So you want to focus on managing, not being a technical expert. Getting things done through your team is key. Again, because this transition from technical expert to management is so difficult, you've got to learn how to get things done through your team as opposed to yourself. As you're a technician, everything and your success is due on what you do, what you accomplish. Well, as a manager, it's not what you accomplish, it's how much you get done through others is what counts. So this is a very difficult transition, as I said. It's very hard to let go and depend upon others when you're so used to depending upon what you do as opposed to what others can do. So getting things done through your team is absolutely key. You want to learn how to communicate and you want to learn how to over communicate. I emphasize this and I'm going to emphasize that throughout this program. You've got to learn how to over communicate. Most of us in IT are shy and introverted, over 70%. Because of that, we have a lower desire to communicate. We've got to break through that as managers and we've got to learn how to communicate effectively and over communicate when it's needed. We'll talk more about that as we go through this class. You want to position your organization into a ready, aim, fire organization. You don't want to be a manager that procrastinates and can't make a decision and you're going to deal with some tough decisions. It could be that you've got a tough employee or a problem employee. It could be that you've got a tough uh, client. You're going to have to make some tough decisions at times. You don't want to be the procrastinating manager who can't make a decision. On the other hand, you also don't want to be the fire ready aim, the hip shooter. What you want to do is you want to get your position prepared, you want to get them ready, you want to understand what your focus needs to be so that they aim on the right priorities and the right projects, and then you want to execute, you, you want to do the fire. So you want to be in a ready, aim, fire mode. Your client is always right. Now, let me put this into perspective. Your client may not be factually correct, but if they have a problem or an issue with IT support, there's something causing that their perspective of what that re reason is may not be accurate but there's something underneath that the the example that i always use is that when i joined my last company i had three managers tell me i needed to fire this employee and she was an it employee well they thought we had a problem employee as i got underneath the issue and did my discovery and so forth I had a great employee, but I didn't have enough resources to take care of IT support. So the bottom line was the client was incorrect in terms of what the problem was, but they were correct in terms of they weren't getting supported. It wasn't the employee's problem, it's a manager issue. When I get the resources in place to take care of the support needs, that problem employee situation that they thought they had went totally away. You need to prepare yourself and your employees that your client is always right. If they have a problem with IT support, our job is to get underneath that issue and figure out what's causing that. Once we know what the issue is, then we can resolve it. There are also three keys to credibility, and I think those three keys are this. First, you have to do an assessment which leads to focus. Your organization can't be focused and know what to work on if you don't do an assessment to figure out what the needs and issues of your clients are. And your clients are two groups of people. First group is senior managers of your company. The second group is the department managers and the users of the company. You've got to do an assessment to understand their needs and issues so that you can focus your IT organization on what they need to do to support that business. 
Second is you've got to have project success. You can't be credible if you don't deliver projects successfully. So I spend a lot of time in my organization and in my IT Manager Institute talking about project success and what you have to do to achieve project success because it's so important to do that well in order to achieve credibility with your clients. And then the third key to credibility is effective communication. You've got to learn how to communicate effectively and as I underline up above, there are times when you need to over communicate. When I go into a consulting situation, let's say I'm gonna be a, an interim CIO for a company, one of the things that I emphasize and focus on immediately when I get there is the communication piece. Because in general, when I have to go in and do something like that, there's been poor communication coming out of the IT organization. I would say 90% of the time that's the case. Well, you can turn around a situation real quickly if you start communicating effectively right off the bat. All right, so these are some guidelines that I think are important for managing IT that you need to think about as we go through this class. All right, we talked about what you want as the new IT manager. Let's talk about what senior managers of your company want from IT. They want an IT organization that is in sync with the business. They do surveys of CEOs and CIOs every year. And invariably in those surveys, one of the top three things that they list on both groups, CIOs and CEOs, is that they want IT to be in sync with the business. And the reason for that is a lot of times IT is not in sync. They also want value and benefits from their IT investment. Companies, CEOs of companies, they spend millions of dollars in IT support. They want value from that investment and they want benefits from that investment. So one of the things that you need to be able to do is to be able to make that happen for them. And uh, there, I have many classes where I talk about the leverage opportunity IT has and how much leverage we offer to a company. We can provide more leverage in terms of reducing cost, improving productivity for a company than any organization in the company. So value and benefits from an IT investment is certainly high on a CEO and senior manager's list. They want you to focus on business priorities. They want proactive leadership that takes care of issues. They want predictable results coming from IT. They want no headaches. All right, let me emphasize that. They don't want any headaches. They just want the technology to take care of the issues that the technology is designed to take care of and they want the IT organization to support that without any hassles and without any headaches. They just want you to make it happen. All right, well, senior managers also want to know what's going on, at least to a certain extent. Now, they don't want all the detail, but they do want to know what you're doing, what your priorities are, and why you're spending money on certain things, especially if you're spending lots of money on certain projects. Uh, so they do want to be in the know or clued in in terms of what you're doing and why you're doing it. And I would add they also want to know what's the benefit of what you're going to get from what you're doing, what your priorities are. All right, what do department managers want from IT? The second part of the, uh, the IT customer. They want IT to take care of their problem. In fact, let's say you've done a lot of great things over the last couple of months for a particular department manager. They don't care about all the past successes. They only care about what you're not taking care of for them right now, what their problem is right now, or what their upgrade request is, their programming enhancement request. They only care about what the issue is today. They don't care about what, how good a job you did in the past. All right, so they want you to take care of their problem or problems. They want you to be focused on their needs and their priorities. They want an IT organization that is responsive and reliable. They want high quality. They don't like it when you come in and fix something and then something else breaks. That's not a good thing. So they like high quality coming from the IT organization. They want an organization and people that are easy to work with and fun and enjoyable to work with. And they want communication. One of the biggest problems clients have with an IT organization 
in many cases is that IT does not communicate. Things get lost in the black hole, they say. IT needs to communicate much, much better. And I told you earlier, there's a big reason why we don't tend to communicate very effectively. All right, they want it all. Well, managing clients and providing support for clients is kind of like wrestling a tiger at times. They want it all. Well, guess what? Our clients wanting and expecting it all is perfectly okay. Put yourself in a client's shoes. If you're working with a vendor and you've got a lot of things that you're expecting from that event vendor, you want high quality, you want it to be reliable, you want it to be delivered when they say they will, and it to cost what they say it's going to cost. It's perfectly okay for our clients to want and expect to get it all. The last part of this scenario is the IT employee. We need to ask what do IT employees want from a new IT manager? Well, they want direction and leadership with focus. They want to be part of a winning team. That's very, very important. Uh, nobody wants to be part of a losing team or part of a team that's getting beat up by their customer all the time because of, you have a lot of problems. They want to grow and be successfully as individuals and professionals. They want a manager who appreciates their efforts. This is huge. IT managers who appreciate their people and show them they appreciate their people. And believe me, it doesn't take a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It just takes a little bit of time and focus to do this. Those managers have employees that will walk through fire for them. So appreciation in the IT world goes a long, long way. Emphasize this as you go into your new IT manager situation. They also want a manager who communicates well. I've had a lot of IT employees in other groups ask me questions like, how come our manager doesn't have staff meetings like you do? You seem to always communicate with your people. And our manager, we never hear anything, we don't know anything that's going on, so forth. IT people are hungry for what's going on. They want to know what's happening and they want to know what our objectives are, they want to know our, what our successes and our challenges are. They want a manager who communicates to them. They also want, I think, to have fun at work. Think about it. We spend a lot of our time at work. If you're not having fun at what you're doing, life can be pretty miserable. So I think employees want to have fun at work. Well, it's pretty easy for us as IT managers to get so involved in taking care of the business that we forget to have fun. I just did a class recently about IT managers need to learn how to have fun. And it's for everybody around them, not just, just for them personally. It's important to have fun at work and I think it's quite okay. When you go into a new IT manager scenario, you want to avoid what I call new manager tendencies. There's a tendency for a new IT manager to want to start managing quickly. That makes sense, right? You want to make your point or make your mark and uh, you want to start having some successes. There's also a strong tendency to push an existing strategy. Well, think about that. If a lot of our IT organizations are out of sync with the company, that wouldn't be a good thing to do. More than half of all IT organizations are out of sync according to a lot of studies. And what I'll tell you is in my travels where I've seen a lot of small and mid-sized companies under a billion dollars in revenue, I would say that number might be as high as 70%. It's certainly been the ones that I've seen, they were out of sync with what the business needs. Now as a consultant when you go in, it's very easy to find out if they're in sync or out of sync. It only takes a few hours to do that. In my class IT assessment, I point out how to do that uh, and so forth. All right, so more than half of all IT organizations are out of sync. If that's the case, you want to avoid just uh, pushing the existing strategy when you pick up the reins for this new organization. Don't assume the current IT plan is appropriate. You must get to know your client to understand what their needs and issues are. And you also need to assess client needs and IT organization capabilities. 
Start managing the expectations as soon as possible, not only the client's expectations, but your employees' expectations and senior management's expectations. You may need to do a reset and refocus in this organization. I've joined many organizations as either an interim CIO or a uh, picked up an organization as part of an acquisition or what have you, and we truly had to do a reset because the focus of what we were doing was out of sync w with what the company or the business really needed for IT to be working on. All right, the key is you want to do the right thing to support the business. It's all about what the business needs in terms of their IT support. So our focus is more business focus than it is technical focus. All right, so let's talk about an IT manager fast start process. I'm going to give you a process to help you get off to a fast start. So I've given you some of the underlying dynamics uh, leading into that. Uh, let's look at a fast start process. All right, it's a four-step process to a fast start. This is what I develop and how what I use. If you follow this, it's going to give you a ready, aim, fire approach so that you can hit the target and get off to a fast start in managing your new IT organization. Step one, assess the situation. Step two, develop a 30 to 90 day action plan. Step three, confirm and gain commitment. Step four, execute. All right, we're going to dive into each one of these in more detail. These are the four pieces. Assess the situation, develop a short-term action plan, confirm and gain commitment with the senior management team, and go execute. Step one, assess the situation. You need to understand what your client's business needs and issues are. You won't know this unless you go and conduct an IT assessment. Now, I call it an IT assessment. It's really a business assessment. As you understand what the business is to a certain level, you'll never understand it to the level the department managers understand it, but as you're trying to understand their business, what you're doing is you're interpreting what you hear into, does this have an IT support implication? For example, if the company says they're going to grow 15% next year through acquisition, there's all kinds of IT support implications associated with that. All right, so your job is to understand the business, and as you do that, you're understanding business needs and issues, challenges, and so forth, and you're looking for things that have IT support implications. I have a class called IT Assessment. It goes through all the details of this. List tangible issues with IT support implications. Identify issues that are risks and opportunities, and the reason you do that is because it helps you prioritize what you work on. Issues that are risk-oriented or opportunity-oriented tend to be higher priorities. Client service pops have big rewards. If there's a nagging issue that you hear throughout the management team as you go through department to department doing your assessment, uh, in my last company, the nagging issue was every department manager asked me, when are we getting email? This company did not have an enterprise email system at the time. In 1999 is when, when I joined my last company where I worked for a corporation uh, outside my own company. Email was their client service pop. You want to address those if you can. Because email is not that expensive to implement and it doesn't take all that much effort if you know if you get the resources that know how to do that, uh, I made that a priority. That was a huge win for my IT organization when we did that. You want to determine the IT organization's capability and capacity. You can't manage your client's expectations if you don't know what you can do and how much you can do in your IT organization. So it's critical that you understand that side as well. Not only the needs and issues of your clients, but what your capability and capacity is in the IT organization. All right, at the end of the day, what an IT assessment, what you're looking for in that is what should your team work on and what should your priorities be. I have an IT assessment how-to guide and training. It's a book called IT Due Diligence. Now, this book focuses on mergers and acquisitions, but this process and the tools that I use in it will work both for acquisitions 
or it'll work for a general IT assessment. For example, if I was a new CIO going into a company, I would use this process and tools. If I were a systems engineer and I got promoted to an infrastructure manager and I wanted to do an IT assessment, I'd use the process and tools in this book. So there's a book that goes through exactly how to do that and describes the tools that I've used in over 45 acquisitions. And also there's a class in this Practical IT Manager training series that talks about IT assessment, the key to IT success. Between the video and the book, you can learn how to do an IT assessment and do, do a very effective one. All right, step two, you wanna develop a 30 to 90 day action plan. When you do an assessment, there's going to be some things that are critical. There's going to be some things that are what I call dial 911. They're on fire and need to get after them right now. It's all hands on deck to take care of this issue. Well, there's some first things first that you've got to take care of. So you want to handle the 911 issues. And I don't care how long you've been in the job. If you've been in the job five, seven, ten years as the same IT manager or a CIO of a small company, for example, if you do an IT assessment, you've got some uh, what I would call critical, important things that need to be addressed right away. So it doesn't matter when you do that assessment. Uh, if it's your first time and you're coming into a turnaround company, you're probably going to have several 911 issues. I had several when I joined my last company for sure. All right, risk and opportunities with low effort and cost. Those need to be identified because you want to go after those early if you can. Low-hanging fruit cost savings. If you see some things that can provide some cost savings or productivity improvement, that kind of interprets the same thing as cost savings. If you see some low-hanging fruit, in other words, it's low effort and low cost to go get those things, you want to go after them. Because what that does is that shows senior management and your department managers that you're business-oriented and looking for business opportunities. That's a real plus if you find those things. You wanna do get some quick successes, those are important. It's important for them to see that this new IT manager is starting to have some successes quickly. It begins building client partners, very important. It motivates your staff, also very important. Both those things are extremely important. And also, there's some key processes that you're gonna to need to implement. For example, there's some change management processes that if they're not in place, you need to get them in place so that your IT employees can actually do the support work. So there's some key processes that need to be implemented and you wanna look at those. Step three, confirm and gain commitment. All right, so what we've done is we've gone through an assessment, we developed a plan or recommended plan, a 30 to 90 day action plan. Now we need to get a confirmation and gain commitment that these are the right things for us to go focus on. Review the plan with senior management, whoever your senior management team is. Now if you're a CIO, your senior manager is probably going to be the CEO, CFO, and maybe the chief operating officer. If you're a infrastructure manager, your senior management team may be a director level in IT or it could be the CIO. So review the plan with the senior management team to get confirmation that these are the right things uh, that exist and that we need to focus on. Confirm your findings. That meeting will help you do that. You want to gain agreement on the priorities of what you're recommending we go do, and you want to gain commitment and support. And what that means is they're willing to support you, and they're also willing to fund the cost of doing these projects. Most of the projects that we do in IT tend to cost some money. When you do these things, that keeps IT in sync. There's no way for senior managers to say, I don't know what IT's working on. I don't know why IT's spending so much money. And the reason they can't do that is because they've agreed on your priorities and they've given you commitment because you've discussed this with them and they know what you're focused on. Very, very important. All right, step four, once you've got commitment and understanding, then you go execute, then you go do the projects. Well, delivering projects successfully, that equals IT credibility. That's the primary way you get credible as an IT manager and as an IT organization. And actually, I would say it two ways. You get credible with senior managers 
in two ways. You get credible by recommending business value types of projects that are going to be a benefit to the company. And then the second part of that is when they approve it, you deliver those projects successfully. You get credible with the department managers by delivering projects successfully. All right, so it's really two parts for the senior management team. You want to implement key processes that help you succeed, the change management processes that I mentioned earlier. You want to stay focused to your client. Client priorities are your priorities, IT's priorities. You want to communicate, communicate, and then communicate some more. I cannot emphasize this enough. One of the downfalls of most IT managers where they have the biggest problem is they don't communicate effectively. So you've got to force yourself to communicate. One of the things that I do is I create schedules that's going to force me to communicate to the people that I need to communicate with. And those people are my customer and my employees. I do monthly IT staff meetings. That's going to help me communicate with my employees once a month at least, and then I'll coach throughout the month. I also create scheduled status meetings with my key clients to go over the projects that we're working on, uh, where we are, the status of those things, and so on. You want to proactively manage client expectations. And that, a big part of doing that is the communication part. If you wait for them to come to you, it's too late. They're already frustrated. So you want to be proactive and communicate Here's what we're doing, here's what we're going to do, here's the status of issues, and so on. Let me give you a perfect example. I recently did an interim CIO position as a consultant for a company, and the job was two things, to start managing the IT organization and then start helping them find a seasoned CIO to run their IT organization in the future going forward. All right, well, when I got there, Communication was a real problem. Well, what I did is I sent out an update at the end of every day for about a month to my client base, the senior managers and the department managers that I was supporting. Every day, update. After about a month, that went to a weekly update. And then later on, it went to a monthly update. But what I'm getting at is they didn't know what was going on in IT. With these daily communications, not only did they know, but our IT organization knew. The other thing that I did is because I thought IT needed a lot more focus than they had, we had morning kickoff meetings every morning at eight o'clock to go over the priorities of where we were, what the status of each of the projects were that we were working on, and what we needed to focus on that day just in case those had changed. Now this was a small company, but that communication was essential to getting that situation turned around. And it got it turned around quickly so that when we did hire a new CIO for this company, we were in a much better position to be able to turn that business over to him. You wanna be conservative so you can over deliver. Live by this rule. Nobody gets upset if you finish a project early or if you finish it under budget of what you thought it was going to be co costing. But somebody's always going to get concerned if you're late or if you spend more than you thought it was going to cost. So be conservative so you can over deliver. Not only for you personally, but especially for your IT organization. And not only do you want to do that, you want to teach your employees the need to do that, to have buffer in their projections in terms of what they're going to deliver to their clients and so forth. And the reason for that is IT employees tend to want to be exact. So if they think it's going to take two weeks, they'll tell them two weeks. Well, nothing hurts them if they tell them three weeks and you get it done in two weeks. If it takes two weeks and two days and you told them two weeks, it tends to be a problem. All right, develop a staff education and development plan. Early on, you want to start educating and developing your IT employees. It's going to be very important because you're going to have gaps and you're going to have areas where you need more backup or more depth. Uh, you want to develop a staff education development plan so every employee uh, gets targeted education to help improve the IT support organization. So start filling those staff expertise and depth gaps as quickly as you can because those are some of the issues that are causing 
some of the needs and issues of your client most likely. Begin working on a strategic plan, 12 to 24 month plan as you get your action plan, your tactical or short term action plan underway. Once you get your resources focused on those things, now it's time for, to start thinking more strategic and start working on a more strategic plan. All right, successful projects equals IT credibility. You heard me say that. It's really, really important. I emphasize this a great deal in my IT Manager Institute. In the Practical IT Manager series, I have a class titled Practical Project Management plus Simple Steps to Develop and Manage Project Schedules. I think you would find this extremely valuable to help you if you're concerned about delivering projects successfully. And also there's a book that you get along with this class uh, called IT Project Management uh, that goes into more depth and talks about the tools and the process that I use to deliver projects successfully. All of these tools are available as a gold member of my organization and you'll learn more about that at the end of the program. When you become a new IT manager, there's a honeymoon. The first 30 days, maybe even as much as 90 days, there, it's a honeymoon period. You want to take full advantage of this period. You want to proactively develop a plan on what you're going to go work on. That's one of the things that we talked about in this uh, fast start process. You want to gain credibility by successfully completing projects. You want to focus on the client, make sure that they know you're focusing on their needs and issues. You want to show IT value based upon what you're working on. You want to communicate proactively, cannot emphasize this one enough. This is probably going to do as much as anything to help give you credibility is when you start communicating proactively, especially if you go into an organization where they have not been doing that uh, before you got there. Show everyone that you're organized, you're proactive, and you're focused on their business, their issues. You're taking charge to get results that matter, that matter for the business that you're supporting. All right, a fast start checklist. This is a 30-day guide to a fast start. There are weekly action steps. What to do week one, week two, week three, and week four. So I'm going to give you very specific things that you can do to get off to a fast start in this first 30 days of your honeymoon period. Focus on positive impact early in your new job. It's going to have a major positive impact for you as well. All right, here it is. Week one is assessment. We're going to break this down in slides uh, following, so don't get hung up on trying to read this particular part. Week one is assessment. Week two is planning. Week three is validation. And week four is execution. At the end of the program, there's a free download. This reinforces and summarizes this entire class. All right, week one assessment. Identify the business issues with technology support implications. I mentioned that earlier. Quantify the issues that have risk or opportunity associated with them. And the reason you do that is because it helps you prioritize. Quantify the IT organization's capability. You can't uh, manage the client's expectations if you don't know what you can do and how much you can do. So quantify their capability and also the capacity that the IT organization has to do things. For example, how many programming hours can you get coded in a month? How many help desk tickets can you handle with your desktop technicians in a week? You need to be able to know those kinds of numbers. Identify client service pops. Again, nagging issues several of your managers may have. Identify those and go after those. Identify IT projects in process and or plan for the next six months. We want to get an inventory of all the projects that IT signed up to either finish because we're working on it already or getting ready to be teed up to go work on in the future. Need an inventory of what those are. Quantify the IT processes needed to support the technology. So if you don't have a change management process in place to handle your software development needs, you need to get that in place. If you don't have the same thing for hardware deployment and those kinds of things, you need to uh, put that in place because those things help your IT employees do their job. Very important. 
Week two, you want to put a plan together. All right, so you've gone through the assessment, you've identified all the needs and issues and what you can do in IT. Now we need to put some kind of a plan together. And we talked about a 30 to 90 day action plan. Validate the active or planned projects that provide value. If not, cancel them. So if the projects that are underway or the projects that are planned in the next six months or so, if they don't provide real value or if you don't have a business sponsor, you want to consider canceling them. We don't want to spend money and use up resources for projects that are not providing value to our company and nobody understands any benefit from it. And the reason for that is it could be the pet project of the CIO that can't, was there before you. I certainly ran into that in my last company. In my last company, this CIO, they didn't have email. They didn't have an enterprise email system. And she was planning to buy a big generator. She was going to spend $50,000 on a big generator. Well, we were in Atlanta, Georgia. We don't need a generator. That's a nice to have. When you don't have email, that's a necessity. I can't, we can't communicate to our employees if we don't have enterprise email. So I canceled the generator and put in email. I was a hero. Let me change that. My IT organization was a hero to the client base when we did that. And when I made that recommendation, I still remember this really well. The CEO and the CFO said, well, we wondered why we needed a generator. Never did fully understand why we needed to spend so much money for that. Validate the active and planned projects and make sure that they're providing value to your company. Define the projects required to address the business issues identified, the business needs and issues that you've identified. So what are the projects that you got to do to go address those challenges? Prioritize the projects that balance risk, opportunity, client service, and cost. Prioritizing your projects is a subjective process. There's no way to just come up with a perfect set of priorities. But prioritize them in the way that you think makes sense. And in some cases, the priorities happen because of certain events. For example, maybe you have to do project A and B before you can even start project C. Or maybe you can't start project D until someone comes back from a long vacation. Prioritize them to try to balance risk, opportunity, client service, and cost, and use your best judgment as you go through that. Develop a 30 to 90 day action plan. This is that short term tactical plan. Develop an IT staff need strategy. What do you need to fill skill gaps or fill depth in certain mission critical types of areas? Target staff on immediate needs and small client service pops if you have them. There's some things, maybe uh, as you're going through this planning, maybe you're having to address a 911 issue. There's things that are going to be taking place even though you're trying to plan. Don't let those critical issues overwhelm you to where you cannot plan because ultimately you won't dig out of this hole if you don't get this plan uh, put into place and get it approved so you can move forward faster. All right, week three is validation. We're going to go have a meeting with our senior management team. Present your tactical strategy, that 30 to 90 day action plan, to senior management for approval. You are looking for them to understand it and to approve it. Present the approved tactical plan to the staff and client managers once your senior management team approves it. Begin focusing your technology resources on that tactical plan, that 30 to 90 day plan, and begin developing the processes required to improve technology support. So if you're missing some change management processes or other types of things, service desk processes and those kinds of things, get those in place as quickly as you can. Begin positioning client managers with what you can do and how much. So start managing their expectations. And also, we want to start managing our employees' expectations as well. Network with client managers and employees. Communicate, communicate, both sides, both with the client and also the employees. All right, week four is execution. We want to target the resources on the quick hits that count on this action plan. Those are high risk issues, client service pops if you have them, opportunity issues with low cost and minimal effort, 
and low hanging fruit cost savings. If you have low hanging fruit cost savings, they don't cost a lot of money to go get or a lot of effort to go get or productivity improvements that falls in line just like cost savings do. If you see those things, go after those early because that can be a quick win. Focus on service desk processes for a quicker response. Quicker meaning you get to the issue quicker, you resolve the issue quicker, and even looking at the quality, you're doing a better job quality-wise. Your service desk information can tell you an awful lot about what's going on in your business if you choose to use it that way. Begin outlining your IT staff's responsibilities so that you can develop performance plans. You want to get those performance plans in place as soon as you can because that's going to be important for your staff's effectiveness. You want to begin creating metrics to measure IT performance so you can see how you're doing and whether or not you're making improvement in areas. And establish project management standards to ensure on time and in budget. You definitely want to establish a project management culture in your company quickly. You want to run projects like projects. And when you do, you're going to be much more successful in delivering them successfully. You're going to gain credibility with your users, your clients, and even within your IT employee ranks. So you've got to have some project management culture to ensure that you deliver projects on time and within budget. Begin a thought process to start developing a strategic IT plan. Once you get that action plan, you get your IT employees focused on that 30 to 90 day action plan. All right, let's summarize real quick. The first 30 days is time to establish credibility. Step one, assess the situation. Step two, build a tactical plan. Step three, confirm and gain commitment. Step four, attack the plan. You want to communicate proactively. I can't emphasize proactively enough. Don't wait till they come to you. Communicate proactively the status of where things are, follow up, those kinds of things. And when you do these things, that's going to get you off to a fast start. All right, it's worth repeating these guidelines for managing IT that I mentioned at the very beginning of this class. Focus on managing, not being a technical expert. Getting things done through your team is key as opposed to trying to do it yourself. Over communicate. Position your organization into a ready aim fire mode. Your client is always right. Again, they may not be factually correct, but there, there's something underneath this issue that's causing them a problem. Your job is to figure out what that is and address it. And there are three keys to credibility. Assessment leads to focus, project success, and effective communication. If you do these things, you can be very successful. All right, there's some questions you may have as we go through this class. One, where do I start? Two, how do I learn more about IT management? Well, we offer several options in my company. My company is MDE Enterprises. Books, newsletters, I have a couple of blogs, tools and templates. I've developed lots of tools and templates over the time, and I have a lot of IT manager training, significant amount of IT manager training, maybe more IT manager training than any company in the world. I've been over 20 years in IT manager and CIO roles working for companies. And then after that, I started my company, MDE, in 2000. So I've been developing and delivering IT manager resources for over 17 years now as I produce this class. And all of that is focused on helping IT managers of the world achieve more success. I also have an IT Manager Institute and ITBMC certification. ITBMC stands for IT Business Manager Certification. It's a comprehensive IT manager how-to program. I take you step-by-step -step how to go about managing an IT organization. Anything from doing an IT assessment, developing and delivering a strategy, managing projects, building the right kind of organization, motivating your employees, budgeting, all of those kinds of things are in this program. So it's very comprehensive. So it includes processes, tools and templates, and examples and insight. I've delivered over 70 classes worldwide with 100% satisfaction. Every manager who's gone through that program, and there have been over a thousand managers, they all have rated me very high 
and satisfied with what they got. And they'll tell you it's the fastest way to develop key IT manager skills. Become a premium gold member and you can access our entire IT manager resources library. And you can find information about this and also the IT Manager Institute at my website, itmanagerinstitute.com. Gold members receive access to our entire IT Manager Resources Library, training books, tools, and templates. It's a significant amount of information. All right, if you need help, you still don't know where to go, contact me for a free consult. Send me an email message to info at mde.net Tell me what your issue is, and I'll jump in there, and we'll talk about it, and I'll tell you what I think. And I, it could be that I can point you to something that's on one of my blogs uh, that would cost you nothing. It could be that I need to tell you about a class that might cost you something. Contact me for a free consult. Your free download, the IT Manager Fast Start Checklist that I told you was at the end of the program. It's at mde.net slash faststart.pdf. I encourage you to download it, mde.net slash faststart.pdf. If you're interested in monthly IT manager training like this one, I've done dozens already. I do two new ones every month, and I've got a new schedule for this year. Uh, if you're interested in that, you need to take a look at our gold member program. It's the best value of everything that I have. It gives you access to our entire IT Manager Resources Library. You get new classes every month, plus all the recorded archive recordings. Go directly to it at itmanagerstore.com slash member. All right, again, it's our very best value in our company. If you're looking for more practical IT Manager resources, be sure to take a look at my website, itmanagerinstitute.com. All right, I want to thank you, and I wish you the best of success. Don't forget your free download, mde.net slash faststart.pdf. And again, if you still need help or if you want to reach out, feel free to contact me for a free consult. It's what I do. Send me an email message at info at mde.net and we'll talk about your issue and maybe I can point you in a direction that can help you address your specific need or your general need depending on what it is. All right, I want to thank you again. I appreciate you attending the class, and I hope this information has been helpful, and I wish you the very best of success.